Welcome to Let's Talk Oral Health Expert Series by Sunstar. In this series, destined to healthcare professionals, we welcome leading experts to discuss how to prevent periodontal and peri-implant disease in a 360 strategy. Each episode will tackle a different angle of this strategy, the psychological approach, the systemic approach, the microbiome-driven approach, and finally, the mechanical plaque control approach. In today's episode, we will tackle the microbiome-driven approach, and we welcome Professor Egi Zara to discover how the microbiome-driven approach can help to prevent periodontal and peri-implant diseases. Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel, and this is Let's Talk Oral Health by Sunstar. Hello. How are you sure? doing? Well, thank you. Very well. We are very happy to have you with us today. So let me maybe introduce you to our audience. You are a, the head of the Department of Preventive Dentistry and Professor of Oral Microbiome Ecology at ACTA in the Netherlands. Your principal research topic is actually in oral, micro, in oral biofilms and microbiome ecosystem in health and in diseases and in translating this fundamental knowledge into clinical practice. Now, recently there has been an increased understanding in microbiomes and in um, microbial ecosystem. For example, if we take the example of caries, caries has long been seen as a disease that was actually caused by specific bacteria like Streptococcus mutans, for example, but now it's seen through a wider lens as a biofilm imbalance. What do you think about that? Well, thank you, first of all, for introducing me and thank you for this uh, good starting question. Well, definitely we are shifting paradigms. We don't see oral diseases as infectious diseases uh, already for a long time. We look at them as more ecological catastrophes, that things go wrong and this disbalance or dysbiosis uh, is the one which makes a host to respond with the disease. And in case of caries, there are a lot of bacteria which can make acid if you give them sugar. It doesn't have to be Streptococcus mutans. So now we have tools to analyze these uh, different bacteria. That's why we also know it, that it's not just one, but it's a whole community having special talents. In the case of caries for making acid, in the case of periodontal diseases, inducing inflammatory response of the host. So, Egia, what is the role of the oral microbiome? Well, I, I think we're only scratching the surface because all, most uh, research is done on a gut microbiome. But what we know already that if we didn't have an oral microbiome, then we would allow all kinds of unwanted uh, microbes, uh, whatever would come into our body. So our mouth is our first defense line. So you need to have a stable oral microbiome which protects you from these intruders. So it's really active warfare. But also when we grow up and, and we are still children and, and we evolve and we get our immune system trained, it's very important to get exposed to the right microbes that your immune system is responding in correct way to what is good for you and what's not good for you. So also having this a very healthy microbiome already at young age is very important for training this. And uh, even more, um, more interesting example is that oral microbes are very crucial for our general health. Uh, for instance, by having um, in, uh, into our diet uh, uh, foodstuffs containing nitrate, and that would be, for instance, uh, red beets or spinach when you just eat, they're rich with nitrate. And uh, these oral bacteria reduce nitrate into nitrites, and this nitrite is reduced later in our body in nitric oxide. And this nitric oxide contributes to dilatation of the blood vessels. So when your blood vessels are, are relaxed, your blood pressure grows down. So in this way, our oral microbes contribute to the healthy cardiovascular system. So I think, uh, yeah, if we don't have these microbes, you can have a lot of side effects outside the mouth as well. So that's why it's important. So we come back actually to the link between oral and systemic, actually. So yeah. it always comes back to the fact that the mouth is part of the whole body. Yes. Yes. You were talking about dysbiosis, and I was just wondering, is there a difference in the microbiome, but microbiota actually, between periodontal diseases and peri-implant diseases? Well, uh, yes, as a fact, uh, there is. And uh, I think it also makes sense that uh, they are different. there are differences because they are anatomically very different, histologically different. Also, the host response would be different to natural tooth or to artificial surface. 
And also while implants are placed, very often a dentist or surgeon uh, prescribes preventive prophylactic antibiotics, which as, as a matter of fact affects all microbiome in your whole body. If it's systemic antibiotics, it will affect also the gut microbiome. And uh, by reducing this, this natural balance uh, just for prevention reasons, you increase the chance that non-oral bacteria or other, other microbes are entering the oral cavity and establishing there. So we see in a peri-implant microbiome that it can, may contain opportunistic pathogens which are not oral species. Coming from? From skin, from, from uh, they're associated with hospital infections. So mainly those are multi-resistant bacteria which you don't want to have near you. I understand, yes. Um, now that we have discussed a little bit on the microbiome, what it is, what it does, how can we use this in our favor? How can we use this to prevent periodontal and perimplant diseases? Well, I wish I had all the answers, but first of all, if you don't have a disease yet uh, and you have a healthy microbiome, my biggest uh, first advice would be maintain this microbiome. Do everything you can to keep the healthy microbes. And how do you do that? Well, first of all, you can uh, really make sure your oral hygiene is very at very good level. And why? Because if you um, don't brush uh, well, then the, also the more proteolytic taxa associated with inflammation will establish and, and will grow happily. But if you remove biofilm all the time, then these more facultative anaerobes, we call them pioneering species, will establish and, and keep this biofilm less mature and, and more healthy. So that's one. Then another thing to really take care of your microbiome is if you're healthy, Avoid antimicrobials as much as you can. Just keep to mechanical cleaning. And thirdly, you can also then help with some means by modulating them, by helping these healthy microbes to grow even better. So to nurturing this Nurture health associated species. Yeah. But in any case, oral hygiene always first and foremost. Approach. Sure. Always. Now, supporting this, uh, this uh, health associated microbiota, uh, seems like actually a proactive solution to balance unbalanced uh, microbiome. So, and also, you know, it would be helpful to favor healthy ones. How can we achieve that? Well, uh, there is a very nice uh, ecological approach, and, and there are already studies showing good signs that it uh, is working. Uh, those are called probiotics. But you also have a more novel approaches, which are not so established well, co called prebiotics, mm -hmm. symbiotics, postbiotics, you just name it. So there are all these new ecological approaches that you can use to, to help your, your normal healthy microbes. Could you just maybe um, talk about the difference between probiotics and prebiotics? Okay. Yeah, many people mix them up because the names are quite similar. Yes. But the prebiotic is actually the food for probiotics. So prebiotic is a substance, uh, uh, could be a fiber, could be a, a, a sugar substitute or something which bacteria like. But they should promote the growth of these health-promoting bacteria, which we call probiotic. So the probiotic are bacteria themselves and prebiotic is their food. So it's about actually nurturing the existing yes. uh, bacteria. And there's one more name, actually. The prebiotics together with probiotics we call symbiotics. So they, they work together because the one is strengthening the other. You already gave uh, some clinical examples with antimicrobials, with antibiotic. Would you have another, um, another example of how the um, micro oral microbiome could be used to favor healthy ones? Well, uh, one of the examples we could uh, zoom into the probiotics, which are alive bacteria having benefit to host, uh, and in this case, oral probiotics. And if you would have a periodontitis patient and you would apply a, a supplement containing these bacteria, first of all, uh, I think you have to uh, make sure that the biofilm is not on the way. So you have to remove the biofilm and then uh, do the mechanical cleaning first, and then you can apply the, the probiotic. 
And the probiotics, uh, the way how we think uh, how they work, they have both local and systemic effects. And the local effects, uh, they are very different strains. Depending on the strain, they will have some antimicrobial activities against the so-called periodontal pathogens, periodontally uh, a more aggressive bacteria. But they will also um, lower pH in the environment. And uh, periodontally active bacteria, those the proteolytic bacteria, don't like low pH. They prefer really basic or high pH. So by having these lactic acid producing bacteria, the environment gets more toxic for these typical periodontal bacteria. And that way you give chance for more um, facultative anaerobes like streptococci to grow. So that's more healthy, more, more uh, uh, less mature uh, microbiome. How do you motivate patient to take care of their oral microbiome? Well, first I would like to then inquire to the patient, do they know what microbiome is? And when they maybe get stuck with this world, which I wonder because it's kind of a buzzword, it's all over the news and scientific literature and also in, 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 uh, just in, in newspapers that microbiome you should take care of. But most of the time people think of microbiome in terms of the gut microbes. And then I could advise you could start with that. Oh yeah, you know, you have gut microbes and you need them because otherwise you would be sick if you don't have them. And then try to explain them that this upper part of the gastrointestinal tract is still part of the same tract because you have microbes in the mouth. The only difficulty is that, yes, we ask you as a patient to remove these microbes, but you're not removing all of them. You're just preventing that they take over. But there are a lot of microbes remaining and those are the ones we want to have. And, and that's your microbiome you want to keep healthy. So I hope this kind of linking with gut might help the patient to find the balance. And is there some sort of communication between the oral microbiome and the gut microbiome? That's a very hot topic right now because there is an, uh, there's a lot of research ongoing. So I wish I had all the answers. And yes, there certainly is, but not direct communication that oral microbes are also in the gut. That's not their place. Evolutionarily, their place is in the mouth. Mm -hmm. But uh, certain microbes uh, prefer certain humans because based on our genotypes how we are built up so there will be types of microbes in your gut and also some types of inner oral cavity and then there they relate in in a way how they prefer to live so they select a host mm -hmm. and uh, yes you can find some oral bacteria in the gut but because we swallow them but they usually don't live there that's not their habitat our audience uh, are professionals what kind of advice would you give to them so that they keep, can give to, to their patients about taking care about the patient's oral, like, oral microbiome? Well, um, I think the most important thing is to let realize that there are these good bugs and bad bugs and these good microbes you want to keep and, and nourish them. So I think uh, having a good oral hygiene would help to, to promote these, these primary colonizers to grow happily. Another very important but forgotten, often forgotten aspect is um, watching out uh, what we eat because uh, a lot of our diet is, is uh, pro-inflammatory. It contains uh, a lot of sugars and which actually we get back as a systemic response from our body. It promotes inflammation everywhere but also in the mouth. So eating less sugars would help already to, to, to normalize the situation in the mouth. And thirdly, uh, we can think of uh, helping these bacteria in the mouse with adding either pro or prebiotics. And then it's important to make wise decision which products should you use because there are a lot of on the market. And, uh, and I think that currently the, the, the biggest disadvantage of the current probiotic products is that they originate from gut strains or from food industry and they have very hard time to stay in the mouse. Like uh, oral cavity is a very stable ecosystem. It doesn't change easily. And these existing microbes are like a defense, very defensive layer against whatever you want to introduce. So these poor probiotics coming originally from the gut will end up in the gut. And even then they're good because they can work systemically. But what we of course want that they also stay in the mouth and do their job also locally, so both ways. And for that probably the, the, the most chances would be for probiotic strains which come from the oral cavity of healthy individuals and could be then introduced as probiotics. So we have come to a close with our discussion. If you had some key insights to give to our professional audience, what would you select? 
Well, I think to, to in one sentence to put together what we just covered is uh, promote uh, uh, keeping a healthy microbiome. Tell everything you know, uh, what's important, why it is important, so that your patient also can follow up this advice, thinking from more general health, from the whole body health, not only oral health, that uh, you need these good microbes to be a healthy person. But also on a long time, for the, not just... Uh, Definitely awful. not just while being treated by, for periodontitis, but for your life. Yes, you need for it your for life. your life. Exactly. Thank you very much for all these, uh, these uh, insights, Egia. It's time for us to wrap it up. Um, in this episode, we approach the microbiome-driven approach in the 360 strategy to prevent periodontal and peri-implant diseases. We learned that it's actually really about keeping a healthy microbiome and nurturing the good bacteria because the microbiome itself can already act as a defense line against diseases. And on the contrary, if we do not take care of it, it might just be um, potentiating the diseases. Nurturing the oral microbiome with pre, pro or postbiotic might be as much as a preventive path as another. All this could not be possible without the knowledge of our guest, Professor Zauer. Egia, thank you very much for being with us today, for accepting our invitation and for sharing your expertise with our audience. It was really a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. It was also my pleasure. Thank you very much. A few complimentary information before we say goodbye. This episode is part of a mini-series of four episodes on the 360 strategy to prevent periodontal and peri-implant diseases. You can find all episodes on our, our Sunstar Global YouTube channel. And if you have questions about this episode, you can follow the link at the bottom of the screen and we will organize a follow-up session with Professor Zara to answer to them. Once again, thank you to our guests and thank you to all of our audience for listening in. This was Let's Talk Oral Health by Sunstar. Thank you and see you soon.